What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Arizona Cardinals Rebuild Franchise. We're in 2032, and the Cardinals are trying to make it now four straight seasons for the Super Bowl title. Quite an achievement for this series, especially given all the change we've seen in recent years. Now, this past offseason was an interesting one. We really didn't do much in terms of free agency, but in the draft, while I was hoping to make big moves in the secondary, we ended up instead getting a lot of young pass rush help, and that began with the selection of A.J. White, an 80 overall outside linebacker who can also play defensive end and is pretty well developed already. But what was really exciting was drafting Curry Jasper because of that star development. Now, obviously, the way development works in Madden, these guys need to play if they're to maintain development. But not just that, the game works on a system where it's looking at their stats rankings in certain categories. And that helps decide who is going to have what development. So... When you're looking at an outside linebacker or defensive end, they're looking at sacks, tackles for loss, and tackles. And then what the game does is it averages the rankings in those categories out, and then it shows your kind of true ranking there, and that's how development is kind of handled. So you really need to play these players if they're to keep their development, but the dilemma here is just that we have some good defensive ends already, and Curry Jasper is a 72 with star development, while we have A.J. White, who's an 80 with normal development. So, obviously, A.J. White doesn't need a whole lot more to progress, whereas Jasper still needs some of that development. He needs the time, anyway, that goes into it. But, also, I wonder, like, what are the chances of him being able to reach those stats, those high stats, to keep this development? So that's just one of the issues we have here, but I think I can find a couple ways to get everybody involved. Because we have three ends I really want to play. Looks like Stevenson is kind of the odd man out now with the two good rookies. Jarvis Salisbury, as some of you pointed out in the last comment section, he really could play defensive tackle and we could trade somebody. That is an option we could play the two rookies at end. The other option would be to get creative with the specialist depth chart and to maybe start somebody at end, but then have at least one position different for the rushing ends. Or maybe, what I think the, the real solution here is to make uh, AJ White and Jasper the rush ends slide Salisbury inside with Iwabima as Gilbert Vaughn has never been a great pass rusher. He's always been... I think a better run stopper, although his best pass rush season was a year ago. Still though, imagine these two rookies on the line with uh, Iwabima and Salisbury inside. We could still keep Gilbert Vaughn, wouldn't need to trade anybody, and everybody would be able to get playing time, especially the young guys that need it to get better for the future. That's where I'm thinking we're going to go this season. Now, different positions look for different stats. There's been a really good uh, guide that's been put out. I've had it linked to me multiple times recently, showing what it takes to get to like quick and star and superstar dev through stats. But defensive ends and linebackers, outside backers anyway, look at the exact same criteria. So I don't really need to change anybody's position, but I might just to make it more organized. But there was one player we drafted I could look to actually move, and that would be our first pick, Malcolm Hogans. A lot of you said that he could play tackle, and I think that there's probably a good case for that, although his pass blocking isn't as good as I would like it to be to play tackle. Last year I took Rashawn Morton. He did not play much as a rookie, and now I'd like him to become a starting tackle. There's also scheme fit Jamerson Williams, who did play a year ago, and I think he did a pretty good job. I like to keep my best run blockers inside, the best pass blockers outside. I think that makes the best difference. I don't think that Madden does a very good job of penalizing weaker interior pass protectors, but they certainly can take advantage of weak edge protection. What I feel makes the most sense, actually, 
is letting Harding move from left guard back to center, which is where I believe I drafted him. I think he was drafted to play center. And then I can trade Devin Brasile in the final year of his contract. That way we can make room for all the young offensive linemen and this will further help us get this team in more of a transitional mode where we can work on developing younger players to be long-term starters. brasil has been here for a long time, but I think he's expendable now and we can get the young guys in place with a center that still has a couple years left on his deal. We have made a deal with the Indianapolis Colts. Just a player-for-player player swap. We give them Devin Brasile and acquire Franklin Bell, a safety. Now, Corey Holiday has been regressing these last couple years, and this last round of regression was very aggressive for him. He lost over 20 points, and I wanted to add a safety in the offseason and failed. Well, how about acquiring Franklin Bell instead, who still has a couple years until he'll be regressing, I probably should have checked his contract, but I'm not imagining it's going to be bad. Oh, that's perfect, actually. Um, Mid-range safeties in Madden, very affordable. But Bell gives us a boost in overall. He gives us a little more youth, and he's somebody that has a, a decent, well-rounded skill set. He does collect some interceptions. He makes a lot of tackles as well. Not many forced fumbles here. A lot of catches allowed a year ago. But I feel that with Holiday's career now kind of going in the wrong direction, it was a good idea to make this move rather than just get a pick. I like getting players in trades oftentimes because I want that immediate return. With picks, you always got to wait, and you got to factor that into the, the value of it. Like when the Vikings traded Sam Bradford, um, one of the things that I think was overlooked was how a first-round pick can't help you win in the, in the right now. Obviously, um, Vikings ended up going 5-0 to start that year, and then their season really tumbled out of control. But I think that overall, sometimes it's better to trade a player for a pick, especially when you're a solid team. You don't need to pick that bad. Here are the ratings, by the way. Average speed, okay in coverage. Better tackler, actually. So at least a very good run support linebacker or safety. What I was about to say is that he actually would be kind of a, a great linebacker option as well. He has the size, I feel, that can't be far off from some of the smaller linebackers we see in today's league, but he has uh, position flexibility if needed. One thing to keep in mind too is as uh, Deontay Wallace ages, if he gets worse in coverage, somebody like Bell could take over a sub linebacker spot. I could add another safety. There's so many ways you can solve these problems. The Cardinals have traded their all-time great, Devin Brasile. Was he really that good at center? He was solid, above average, I'd say. All-time great, though. It does not appear that the in-game media is a fan of my trade. All right, the first depth chart is now set, and I like where things are at. We have three scheme fits along the offensive line. I do need to sign a tight end or two for depth behind Ollie Kitchens. Defensively, we will have Pearson Walters play some off-ball linebacker, and I might try out different players at that spot. And then for our specialists, as I mentioned, I wanted to work on getting Jasper and White on the field at the same time with Iwabima and Salisbury handling duties in the middle. Just a couple more signings, then I'll sign Spencer Mondek as a blocking tight end. We're also going to bring back Tyree Williams as a backup receiving tight end who does have some eligibility left for the practice squad. We're also going to sign a three-year veteran, Wendell Darkwa, a tight end with some vertical field stretching abilities. He has 84 speed and he is six foot seven. The first preseason game is over. The Cardinals were victorious 21 to 12. Justin Olivia, the new backup quarterback, had an outstanding performance. Couldn't have been much better. 17 of 20. All right. And no, I will not be trading J.W. Unger. I don't plan to at any point to make room for a new quarterback to start. Jason Levin is back and better than ever. A buck 24 and a touchdown. 
You want to talk about Lemon starting again? We'll have much more luck with that. But it's going to be Duran Samuda's show. And Brian Gutierrez, he's going to play a lot again this year in the slot, especially 92 and a touchdown. Staley Moody had a touchdown as well. Really want to see what the defense is able to do here in the preseason. Howard Iwabima had a couple sacks, and those were the only ones for our team. I'll take a pick, though. Corey Holiday got it done. 31 to 10 this time, and a good performance again from our defense. We had a couple turnovers, it looks like. Justin Olivia with another solid performance. Again, highly efficient on his passes. 144 yards in this game. We had two interceptions and two sacks. And it looks like Philadelphia is having to find a new quarterback this year. Lemon found the end zone. Willis Mitchell found the end zone. And then Staley Moody with 57 yards. Darkwa had a touchdown. Gutierrez. Burns had a sack, and so did Vaughn. Must have split that with Curry Jasper. Hopefully Jasper can get some good production this year because I want to make the most of that development, and I think playing the rush ends the way I am will help us do that. We also beat Green Bay, going to 3-0 on the preseason. J-Dub a touchdown plus a pick. We picked up three sacks on defense in this game. Duran Samuda had his best preseason performance as Lemon again found the end zone. Gutierrez for 71 yards. Joey Spencer will hopefully develop a lot this year. And let's check out the pass rush. This time Jasper got one. Salisbury and Iwabima with Jeteri and Roberson getting a pick. The Justin Olivia hype train has just left the station. Three touchdowns, 317 yards. This is one of the most impressive quarterback preseasons I've ever seen. Through this series, the Anton Greenberry Brown series, that's pretty good. I can't wait to see his full stats. Moody again, I think he had a pretty good preseason as well. Might be our leading receiver actually from the entire deal. And then for the pass rush, Stevenson. I'm actually thinking about trading him. Iwabima had a couple. Aaron Howell picked up an interception. We'll upgrade Ahmad Burns ahead of the new season getting underway. Already one of the elite linebackers in our league. Superstar development Ahmad Burns. He's pretty special. He picked up that superstar dev, by the way, last year. And the uh, ones that middle linebacker cares about are simply... I believe interceptions, tackles for loss, and tackles. All things he's very good at acquiring. Still didn't make the Pro Bowl, though. Jarvis Salisbury will play a lot more defensive tackle this season, and hopefully we still see him be productive. I'm really hoping we can make this work with a defensive line this year. Rashawn Baker's interesting because he's currently the number four corner on the depth charts, but if we played him... It would be beneficial. He's young, fast, he's good in coverage, has good size. I'll have to uh, take a look at that here in just a moment as we upgrade swing tackle Devin Haynes pass blocking. And then I've been uh, thinking about this corner situation a lot with this team. But I brought back Roman Gordon because, one, he was very good last year. And two, I wasn't able to make, you know... Huge changes in the offseason. He's got 88 zone. Would it be worth it instead to play Baker, who's just an overall less, and then you know work on upgrading him? And while he's young, he has that chance. We're gonna give it a shot. Baker will start. We're still going to have McFadden play the slot, unless they mess that up for me. Slot corner Frank McFadden, good to go. Undefeated preseason, by the way, as Justin Olivia has a 124 quarterback rating. Six touchdowns, just the one pick. Absurd completion percentage at 78, combined with a 9.3 yard per attempt. Jason Lemon ran really well. And if, for whatever reason, he begins to outperform Samuda, he will again become the starter. 
in the air. Brian Gutierrez barely beat out rookie Staley Moody for the leading receiver. Otherwise, they tied in every other main category. We also had a pretty good preseason for Wendell Darkwatt, our second tight end. Orleans Bruton also did a pretty good job. Surprisingly, not much from Bradley Young or Joey Spencer. Rashawn Morton did allow three sacks. We'll have some issues here, probably, just getting these players up and overall. But it'll be a process we can work on, and he'll be upgrading here pretty soon. I'm doing a lot of my upgrades in O-line. I have been the last couple seasons. And then defensively, Howard Iwabima forgot the season didn't even start. He's using up all this energy in the exhibition games, getting five sacks. And then we turn the ball over a handful of times. Already we get to upgrade the rookie Malcolm Hogan's. And we should go probably pass protector with him, at least get that up a little bit. But no rating here stands out as being a huge concern. So up to a 79 overall, the rookie guard gets a nice boost here and a little bit stronger ahead of week one. All right, everybody, three straight Super Bowl championships and the title defense begins again. Check out our schedule. We're talking the Saints, all three rivals in the division, and the Bears. We're going to learn a lot, I think, in just these first five games. Well, that's a concerning way to begin the season. We lose by 12 to New Orleans as we hang up another banner. That's not good. The quarterbacks had very similar stat lines in this one. Two scores for each on the ground. Deion Finney all over our defense here with 90 yards and two scores. Samuda held the 3.1 yards per carry. Bradley Young had a good performance, 10 catches, a buck 20. Gutierrez also had a nice day. Doesn't appear our pass defense was really much of a problem. Curry Jasper led us with one and a half sacks. Also had one from Iwabima, one from Salisbury, one from AJ White. All right, so somehow the defense didn't play. Well, I mean, they didn't have any big standouts, but... They still had their quarterback throw for 300 with no turnovers. I'm looking for like a missing touchdown here on like defense or something that can help explain why they won by 12. We get to upgrade Deron Samuda. And this is about the overall range where Jason Lemon took off as a player. We'll see if the same happens for his successor. And I'm very happy to upgrade Jamerson Williams here with a pass protector boost. Also got some strength there as well, and now he's a 79 overall. That's more like it, a three-score victory over Los Angeles, a team that's undergoing some change in this series as they brought in a new quarterback in the offseason, Dylan Herring from Wisconsin. He threw two interceptions, was sacked five times. So far, the pass rush through the preseason and these first two games have been very promising. That's 10 sacks in the first two. J-Dub, three touchdowns, no picks, doing great. Samuda for a good 100 yards and a touchdown. Lemon also found the end zone. Doral Collins is their second year running back. So next time we see this team, should we watch a game against them? They'll look very different than the last time we played against them. Gutierrez found the end zone, so did Bradley Young. He spread the ball around quite a bit. Kitchens has been pretty quiet, though, through the preseason and the beginning of this full year. 12 tackles for Rashawn Baker, plus two interceptions. That might be player of the week numbers. Salisbury had two sacks, Iwabima, Vaughn, and then a split sack here. I was right, Baker won that award. I wonder if he can handle covering someone like Jarek Payne, though, on the other side. Six catches, four touchdowns. That's ridiculous. And a quick look at this upcoming draft class. And I love the various positions here toward the top. I don't like when it's stacked at one spot. This is, to me, a lot more realistic. The big board has a couple receivers, a couple defensive linemen, a quarterback, linebacker. Nice. I'll scout the best players, why not? Marshall Bullock, a deep threat from Tennessee. Very good deep route runner. Not sure if that top three, to me, says top five pick. We'll see about his combine. 
What I'm most interested in is the secondary, which is where I think we'll be wanting to target things early. The best one is overrated. Deontay Mills, a fifth round talent. And then Joseph Spellman, a sixth round talent. Angelo Skinner, a fifth round talent. Come on, corners. Here we go. Ben Klecko, six foot four. Good zone, good tackle. Okay, that'll work. Fisher Baldwin. B minus man coverage. We'll come back to him. Of course, we also have some big contracts to take care of this season, and it would probably be better to do that sooner than later for Ahmad Burns and J.W. Unger, arguably the two most important players on the entire team. But there's still Howard Iwabima. Ryan Schroeder's going to get paid. Tyree Stevenson, Greg Starks. Any other key starters? Looks like a fairly simple year beyond the top two. Okay, like I said, why don't we take care of this sooner than later? Let's give the baseline offer to Unger, and he will stay in Arizona, signing the five-year extension worth right around $30 million per season. Oh, wow. I don't think I've ever seen the fair offer they're looking for be a seven-year contract. But if there was ever a player deserving of it, it's a mod Burns. Seven years would take him to age 31. And regression is not going to be a big problem with him. Baseline offer. A mod Burns wants a little bit more. 28 to 17. We defeat Seattle for our second straight win. Unger, three more touchdowns and does not turn the ball over. And now six sacks. That is 16 over our first three games this year. Samuda ran for 72 yards. We're not giving Lemon as much work as I thought. I remember when Samuda was the number two, he'd still be getting like 11 to 13 carries a game. Ollie Kitchens, there we go. He, Gutierrez, and Spencer all find the end zone in this game. Sure seems like we have an overwhelming pass rush here. In the making, Curry Jasper. Three sacks. That's already got to take him to around five in his rookie season. AJ White, one and a half. One for Salisbury. So far, I'd say my idea there at the defensive line was one of my best in a while. That's also a rookie of the, or the player of the week award for Curry Jasper. And that's a pretty good step towards becoming rookie of the year. One area I might want to address in the offseason is at linebacker, getting someone to develop and maybe take over for Deontay Wallace. While his talent is third round, I would have a lot of interest in Martinez Shazer. Oh, wow. Wide receiver has one of the steepest drop-offs in talent I've ever seen. Three ones and then late round options whole bunch of upgrades to do now let's begin with curry jasper nice start to his career and obviously he does not take long to upgrade with that star development by the end of the year especially if he can win some accolades he could pass aj white in rating and show just how powerful star development can be he already earned some legacy three sacks in that game a tackle for loss here which earns you a little legacy as well Speed rusher. Got to get after those quarterbacks, and I can't wait to take the field next time and actually see him play. Let's upgrade Rashawn Morton. He'll not jump in overall, but we do get his strength and pass blocking finesse up a little bit. Frank McFadden with the zone archetype upgrade, plus one speed as well. That's pretty nice. The zone coverage for him now 84. Craig Stark, still a starter for now. We'll see if I look to replace him in the offseason. And Gutierrez, who did an outstanding job a year ago, got a development boost as well. 83 catching. Sure seems like when we play that he has like 93 catching. He doesn't drop much. We'll go possession though for that catch and traffic upgrade. I really don't want this to have to be a franchise tag situation. And the last times I've done this, after two failures, we've basically been turned down for an extension. So, 
I'm going to really boost up this signing bonus for Ahmad Burns because I want to avoid the tag. I want to avoid delaying this another year for a long-term deal. I feel this was very fair. I just increased the signing bonus to bring the value up by $5 million. Let's go for it. Seven over 70. What? Wait, but he's not going to... He's not saying no at all. We just have to upgrade the salary next time, so I'll probably do an additional $5 million there. Wasn't expecting this. We lose 15-14 to 14 to San Francisco. Very little scoring in this game. Olivia actually threw a couple passes. J-Dub intercepted for the first time this season twice. We picked up three sacks on defense. We did run the ball. All right, Samuda 4.9 a carry. A touchdown for Mitchell. In the air, Young for 78 yards. Gutierrez does find the end zone. Darkwa seems to be getting a lot of opportunity despite being tight end number two. And defensively, Ahmad Burns and Howard Iwabima pick up sacks. So does A.J. White. Interception again for Aaron Howell. He's over 30 now in his career. But that's a 2-2 two two opening to the season which is still a first place tie with nobody in our division breaking out. This is likely my last chance at negotiating with Ahmad Burns, and that's why I'm increasing the money so much. He's worth it, and I don't want this to, uh, to fail. And it will work! $75 million over seven years for perhaps the best linebacker in our league, and that will basically set us up going forward with the core of our roster. I think it's unlikely Iwabima returns next year, but a tag is always possible if we have the room. And it says 42 million right now in cap space, so we might be able to get that to work. I think I've done a pretty good job of getting younger and cheaper in a lot of spots, so we can handle these large contracts without being too close to the cap. So you just watched me give Ahmad Burns $75 million over seven years. Now he's far and away the top rated linebacker in our league. Although I would like to find someone comparable. Let's go to Widmer here from the Jets and just take a look at his contract because he's on his second deal already. How does this stack up? Widmer is on a four-year, $52.8 million contract. Now that was his years remaining. He might have even had another year on this deal. It was probably a five-year contract, I would want to say. It looks like from a per-year standpoint, though, we got a better deal. His highest cap number is 19.6. Burns is actually very reasonable. It never gets higher than 13.9. So I guess that's the benefit of making this deal so long term. A lot of it is spread out. That large signing bonus. What happens with signing bonuses is you just divide a signing bonus by the number of years. And that is lumped into the salary for that year. So if this were a five year contract, his highest cap number would be pretty outrageous. But this is the benefit of going super long term, and it's something I should probably look at doing more for players that are younger than, say, 26. I know you wanted to see Kashim Verdin's numbers, though, throughout his young career. Now, three years into it, already the top-rated receiver in our league, along with Devon Del Greco and, I believe, Moses Henderson, he has nearly eclipsed 1,000 yards in every season. He's put together 28 career touchdowns already. Pretty solid numbers, and I'm guessing he doesn't play in the slot. Slot receivers tend to just get more production here in Madden 19. I hope that's not the case going forward. Another close loss to Chicago actually puts us below 500 five games into the season. J-Dub threw two touchdowns. I don't know what's happening here. Three losses already, though, for Arizona. Very uncharacteristic of our team. And this was a team that we've had a lot of success against in the postseason. Overall, this has been a really tough beginning to the schedule. But it's still a lot of losses for this point. Jasper does bring down the quarterback again. So that's positive. A.J. White, an interception. 
Looks like Kashim Verdon is going to get an extension as well. I like to see what that ends up being. Thankfully, the losing streak ends, and actually at 3-3, three and three, we're in first place, uncontested in the division. Everybody else has a losing record. So a rematch against the Dolphins, and we destroyed them, actually scoring touchdowns in this game, as opposed to the entertaining Super Bowl we all enjoyed not long ago. Three scores for J.W. Unger, six sacks on Dwight Witzel. I have built up an amazing pass rush now in this series, and it's very young and very uh, inexpensive, relatively speaking. Bradley Young, a buck 24 and a touchdown. Gutierrez scores. Nice day for Morris Morgan, who also played well in the Super Bowl, but how about our team? We got a sack for Burns, Walters, Iwabima, Salisbury, Jasper again. He's almost at a sack per game. Maybe he is. Burns is named Player of the Week, getting a sack plus the interception. I'm really liking a lot of the things about this draft class, and so far, I think there are some decent options for safety. Baldwin, a fifth round talent. Whenever I see the most key trait in a good spot, though, like I still have interest, even though he's 24 years old, less time to develop, plus the, the grade there. I would still consider drafting Baldwin. At strong safety, there are more options, and thankfully some beyond the first round because I don't have much luck in the first rounds of drafts, it seems. Dyron Dupree, we don't know the coverage. I think I'm finally getting over the whole I don't know the coverage thing. It never ends up being that low. Every time I check out these safeties, it's like 76. Big deal, you'll get there. They're good at everything else. So, that's been my uh, speech. Hope you enjoyed it. Oh, a lot of upgrading it looks like. Ahmad Burns. Didn't you just get upgraded? It never ends. He's got an amazing lead too at linebacker. Like I've increased XP sliders so much throughout the series, but there are still a lot of positions that are pretty low. But Ahmad Burns being a superstar, yeah, he's on his way to becoming a 99 overall. Rashawn Baker, by the way, two more zone coverage. That brings his rating up to 87. He's not very good man-to-man. -man. I might want to work at that at some point. Cameron Losman, a backup guard. Try to keep a quality guard and tackle on the bench. We're doing a pretty good job of that. If Losman had to start, I wouldn't be too worried about it. Joey Spencer does not seem to be doing quite as much this season. I'm actually going deep threat for him. Just uh, switch up the skill sets here. I want, you know, if Spencer could be a great deep threat, I'd love to get him there. He's got intriguing size, hands, and speed. So I think that it's a, a good long-term idea. And we can't forget about our backup defensive backs either. Will Lejeune. He is a 74 overall, again, specialized in zone coverage. I almost complained that we just lost. Then I remembered it was our bye week. I think we're getting to the point, too, where we can talk even more seriously about replacing Howard Iwabima, especially with the success we're having already with our new look defensive line. Or Yeah, it is a new look defensive line. There are two brand new players and one player in a new spot most of the snaps. So bringing back Howard Iwabima at that salary is unlikely. We don't do anything exciting around the trade deadline this time, but we did win a game, so we have that. 28-12 over Buffalo with three scores from J.W. Unger. Might be his best touchdown to interception ratio right now. On the ground, neither team did too much. We were especially inefficient with our carries. Kitchens for 101. Nice to see that. Joey Spencer with a touchdown. Also scores for Samuda and Brian Gutierrez. What the defense do for sacks? Just three, which for other teams would be a decent week. Deontay Wallace got a pick too, along with sacking the quarterback. We just keep winning these awards, by the way. This time it belongs to J.W. Unger. Is Howard Iwabima playing his final season as a Cardinal? Very well could be. 
but it all comes down to the cap space. And if there's room, of course I'm not just going to have him leave, but I have to be able to afford it. And so far, he's doing his job. But so is Curry Jasper, who is really stealing a lot of the spotlight this year. I believe he leads the team in sacks currently. Here's another upgrade, by the way, with that star dev, 84 finesse. I'm surprised, though, that he's done so well, because I thought being a 72 overall, it might not work out so well right away. But I've already been proved wrong, thankfully. How about a 17-3 game this time? Another great performance for our defense. I think we have a pretty special... We have a special team, okay? We won three Super Bowls in a row, but this defense is getting pretty, pretty impressive. 81 yards for Duran Samuda rushing. Jeremy Hogden, a big day against us. All right, safeties, what's going on with that? And then on defense, we had to do something impressive. AJ White picked up a sack. Nothing today for Jasper, sadly. But overall, our most dominant defensive performance yet. Another upgrade is earned by Jarvis Salisbury. I wonder if I should give him some finesse moves ever. He already has 94 power. Like, what makes a, a greater difference? Moving from 94 to 95 or from 76 to 77? I honestly have no clue, but I'm going to switch it up because I feel like I've been going at player strengths now for a long time. We're not going to mix it up though for Duran Samuda's development as he becomes a 90 overall halfback. This is more like it. Four straight victories and we've allowed 10 points combined over our last eight quarters. The Rams had 175 yards. Three touchdowns and no picks off Unger. He's really cleaning up those turnovers. Levin found the end zone on two occasions. Gutierrez for 117, almost outgaining the entire Ram offense himself. Two scores for Samuda in the air. So I believe that gives us a 2-0 record against them on the season. I'll verify here in a moment as White, Salisbury, Jasper, and Vaughn get after the quarterback. And Starks collects another interception. But so far in the division, we are 3-1. I think I'm going to end the episode here. I've been recording for a while now, and I'd like to maybe get into a game next episode, finish out the season, and then think about the playoffs. I might even just simulate all the way through and then watch a playoff game. I don't know yet. But it would be nice to see some of the new players on the team. Check out this defense. And we do have a really good matchup next week against the Cowboys. And the Patriots are right after. Both teams might uh, be among the best. The Bears are 8-1. The Patriots 7-1-1. So we could always watch an interesting game and then get through the rest of the season. And get on to hopefully uh, a nice playoff run again. But here we are, nine games in. J.W. Unger has thrown all of three interceptions. Very impressive. 22 touchdown passes to go with it. Duran Samuda is right around four yards per carry with three touchdowns. They're good numbers, especially for Madden. It's hard to even get this efficient in the air. Bradley Young is on pace for over 1,000 yards on the year, but Gutierrez already has eight touchdowns. Walker Onobon had 16. Gutierrez could potentially get there. For the defense, led in tackles by Deontay Wallace, led in sacks by Curry Jasper, but he's got some competition. That's pretty impressive to already have four players at six or greater. And then for INTs, Starks, Baker, Howell, each have two. Here are the league leaders at this point, by the way, with Baker Mayfield. Still going strong in year 15. He's an 83 overall, and he's one of the most decorated quarterbacks in our league. He's won, I think, multiple Super Bowls in this series, and I'm guessing this will be the last year of his career. Mike Phillips leads in touchdowns, along with Bryce and Anthony. Each have 23. Unger right behind them. Most interceptions, the rookie for the Rams, and then the Rams' old quarterback. Very cool. Here's Dylan Herring, by the way. Star Dev, 80 overall from Wisconsin. He has average throw power, 
interesting accuracies across the board. They're all right. Pretty good. And, um, yeah, he just looks like a solid quarterback. We'll see if he's able to break into that upper tier. Marion DuBose, still one of the most effective backs in our league with a very impressive yard per attempt. 5.3 is really tough in the simulating. But he's a 98 overall with superstar skills, and I'm guessing that if we ever have to play against the Chiefs, he'll be nearly impossible to bring down. CJ John. I've never even heard of him. A Patriots receiver, third year, good overall, but that's a name I do not recognize whatsoever. He is a good route runner. These are good seasons, but this is only like a half season's worth of games here, and he's already matching what he usually does and surpassing it when it comes to touchdowns. Formerly a second round pick in 2030, and really hasn't put uh, an unproductive game on the stat sheet all season. A lot of productive tight ends as well. Interesting how that's working. Leader in yards, Le'Veon Roosevelt. 18.4. That is really nice. Kashim Verdon, 691. For touchdowns, Matt Austin now with 9. How about the leaders in sacks? We have Douglas Walton at 14.5. Okay, I... Kind of thought we'd be maybe number one there with Curry Jasper. I mean, he's pretty high up there. He's actually not listed, but he would be pretty high on this list if it included all positions. I'm still not sure why that hasn't been fixed. Douglas Walton, though. I know his sack numbers were going down every year since his rookie, and now a career high nine games in. There have been some re-signings around the league as well. Just looking to see if Verdon is on this list. I like seeing the big contracts that happen throughout the series, especially as the cap rises. And there it is, five years, $95.6 million. Now the growth rate on contracts here has not been anywhere near like where the NFL is. Kashim Verdon would be the highest paid receiver in the NFL today, but not by as much as you'd think. And especially 10 years down the line, Odell Beckham is making 18 a year with the Browns, and Kashim Verdon's making 19.12 million a year with the Broncos. I just went through the entire league to find the highest paid player or the most valuable contract. J Dub's close, but he's only number three actually in the entire league. And the other two ahead of him are indeed quarterbacks. Tanner Merritt from the Bills, a 90 overall, has a richer contract overall. He's the number seven ranked player at the position, but he's never put up that elite production, so I'm surprised that they paid him that much. His highest cap number is going to be nearly 40 mil. But J Dub has a $175 million value, Tanner Merritt has 180. So what would you expect from number one? 190? 200? Try 246 million dollars. Benjamin Cody of the New England Patriots has the richest contract in our entire league. And as the number one ranked quarterback, that's what you would expect. The Patriots are trying to get back to those dynasty days they had so much success with. And perhaps Cody can get them there. But remember, the Patriots dynasty happened alongside Tom Brady on a pretty friendly contract with a reasonable cap number that never got anywhere near $52.2 million. That is amazing. Now what's interesting here is that while it would look like Cody is hogging all the cap space, they're actually just not spending their cap space. They still have $52 million in room and they're one of the top teams in the league. And that worries me. Also, shout out to the Dolphins who seem to overpay everybody in free agency but still have like $20 million in cap space because their highest paid player is a running back. Alright everybody, that was a fun episode. Good to see some development and to see us also having what appears to be another successful season. We still have seven games to go this year. We'll get through more next episode. We'll get to the postseason and then go from there. 
But thank you all for watching. Please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel and leave your thoughts below, especially when it comes to what you'd like to see from next episode. I'll see you all next time. Have a great day.